What's going on guys? Bengal again here coming back at you with another video. And let me just say a few things before we jump into it. I know a lot of people try to skip through this. I, important info. Please, 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 please. I'm being very annoying right now. Kind of goes with my, whatever I do. Um, but I know everyone wants rebuilds all the time. I see it in the comments section. I hear you. I know a lot of you are subscribed for the rebuilds. And you can continue to subscribe for that. Hit that subscribe button if you're not already. But we have a few more months to go before Madden 21 comes out and we can kind of restart some of these rebuilds. So we got to pace ourselves with other content. For the most part, you guys have been enjoying it a lot. I did the NFL rebranding for logos and jerseys. We're going to be doing some more like kind of alternate uh, special what if jersey videos in the future. Of course, all credit as always will be given to those creators. There was like a few misconceptions that people thought I did it for some reason, even though I said in the beginning of the video, hey, here's credit to these guys. But that gets out of, that out of the way. Uh, on Twitter, I tweeted out and I said, what team should I rebuild? I had a poll and the Broncos won the poll, so we're doing them. Make sure to follow me on Twitter. Link is in the description if you want to vote on those. Choose what team I rebuild next time. I think I'll also be doing some of those on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. Link is in the description there. I want to get some of those other social medias involved. But this is a fun team, man. We got Drew Locke, who looked pretty good last year in limited opportunities. Broncos kind of had a revolving door at quarterback running different guys in and out we saw Flacco for a while saw Drew Locke for a while and uh, it looks like he could be their quarterback of the future and in the draft they heavily invested in that position KJ Hamler in the second round and of course as you see from the title and thumbnail of this video Jerry Judy in the first stud receiver out of Alabama he's going to offer us a lot of versatility can play outside can play in the slot awesome awesome player tremendous route runner solid hands Jerry Judy is a beast Another thing I will say is I'm using a Madden 21 roster that is in the file share on PS4 by MF Maddox. And if you want to know how I get the 2021 draft class, I show everything throughout the video. All your questions will be answered, I can assure you. Hi, it's me from the future. And uh, yeah, thanks to Manscaped, I was able to shave and I actually got a haircut. So while my problem is now looking 12 years old, one problem you'll never have to worry about again is long nose hair. Thanks to the new Weed Whacker, completely new product by Manscaped, and it is one that is fantastic. And as a tall guy myself, nose hair could be an issue. Like, I'm not screwing around. This is an actual issue, is people looking up my nose, and nearly 80% of partners polled said that long nose hair is a turnoff, and I could totally understand that. So you're going to want to try out the Weed Whacker 9000 RPM motor. With the Peak Hygiene Plan, you're going to new blade every three months shipped to your door. What you're going to want to do is use that peak hygiene plan, use code BANGLE, save yourself 20% off, and get free shipping. It's a win-win. Don't let nose hair be a problem for you. It's painful. It's disgusting to look at. Do yourself a favor. Use code BANGLE. Save yourself some money, and save yourself some pain and embarrassment with the Weed Whacker. All right, let's check out the team. A lot of good young players on this team. Of course, I will say that when we load in the 21 roster, because of the franchise, I can't actually have the rookies on their real deals and real development traits, so I will be editing those myself. Jerry Judy, we're going to assume that he has a five-year contract because we have a fifth-year option, and we're just going to play to set that up already, so I'm going to give him five years. I'm also going to give him Superstar X-Factor development. In my opinion, he was the best receiver in the draft, and Superstar X-Factor, I think, is quite fair for him. He is a beast, also five-year contract that's going to increase over time. And um, Superstar X Factor, uh, I think, is extremely fair for, in my opinion, the best receiver in the draft. That's pretty much how we've operated. Top one or two at the position will get Superstar, Superstar X Factor. Judy deserves that for me. Hamler, I'm going to give star development to. Also going to give him a four-year deal, obviously, four-year contract for a rookie by default. I'm also going to give Natani Muti star development. He's so atrociously low rated in this class. His only real issue is a staying healthy. Really, really good player at Fresno State. He was awesome. It was a pleasure to scout him. Really, really good offensive lineman. Injuries are a huge concern of his, but uh, I think star development is well warranted. Really, really fun player. Again, it's literally only injuries that are holding him back, and he's got 91 injury. This guy has not done his research. Melvin Gordon was a big addition to this team as well. Let's go over the roster. So, Cortland Sutton, monster receiver on the outside. He'll be an awesome pairing with Jerry Judy, KJ Hamler in the slot. 
A lot of potential here with Drew Locke, who has star or better development than star. Philip Lindsay, Melvin Gordon is going to be a great one to punch at running back. Tim Patrick, not a bad fourth receiver to have. Deshaun Hamilton, pretty useless to me, if I'm being honest. Garrett Bowl should not have star development. He is probably on his way out. I love Juwan James at right tackle, but his contract's pretty pretty big. He's not going to be able to develop much more than this, maybe up to an 80 at best. So we're probably going to look to completely replace the offensive line. Graham Glasgow is good. Dalton Reisner, I think, is a beast. I'm also going to give Lloyd Cushenberry not only a four-year contract, but star development as well, in my opinion. He was either the first or second best center in the entire draft. Cushenberry, you can say, is safely either the second best center, we'll say, because I, I did like Cesar Ruiz more than Cushenberry as a player. Uh, but their offensive line is pretty good. A lot of potential here. I love this, the uh, Broncos draft. I don't want to go overkill with these development traits, but I think they're fair with how I rank these players, and that's how I'm assigning these development traits. Noah Fan has a ton of potential. Stud, stud tight end. People wanted to say in the pre-draft process, and this was now, uh, I guess, two drafts ago at this point, that this guy couldn't block, but that was just completely untrue. Uh, this is a guy who can block, despite what his ratings might say. He was a solid blocker at Iowa. Maybe a tick behind TJ Hawkinson in that regard as an all-around tight end, but really, really well-rounded player. It's going to be exciting to see how he can develop over the course of his career. And um, when we look at the defense side of the ball, gets a little bit worse. Now, Kareem Jackson uh, has evolved into being a good player. Not great in his first few years in the NFL. First round pick out of Alabama. Wasn't much for the Texans, but in his final year with the Texans, contract year, and now with the Broncos, has been a solid player. I think Justin Simmons is maybe in the neighborhood of most underrated player in the NFL. Justin Simmons is incredible. Bradley Chubb is a good up-and-coming player. And of course, uh, Todd Davis on the inside, probably going to look to replace him. And this is a really, really interesting player. Alexander Johnson came out of nowhere. As you can see, he's 27 years old with just one year of playing. So he was uh, someone that just really came out of nowhere. I mean, that's the only way I can say, uh, say it. He was just so good last year and someone that you just really wouldn't have expected to be one of the best linebackers in the league. And he played up to that level. Von Miller, we know that. Uh, he's a monster. He's incredible. Has been great since he was drafted to coming out of AM in 2012. Or 2011, excuse me, 2011. And he's continued his dominance in the NFL uh, over the course of his career. Jeremiah Tachu hasn't been too much. Josie Jewell in there as well. Uh, not a ton here. Um, outside of our big boy here in Von Miller. But, I mean, Chubb's good. Alexander Johnson probably just won't develop well because he's 27, only normal development. Tra they traded for A.J. Boye. They brought in Bryce Callahan. Um, outside of them, too, there's not a ton going on here, like Duke Dawson. Uh, they drafted Michael Ojemudia. We're going to have to make him a four-year contract. They also have uh, Isaac Yadam as well, who's probably even a better player in college than Michael Ojemudia was. But we'll give him a four-year deal. I don't know if I want to play Yadam over Ojemudia. Like, Ojemudia is a rookie. I think he's younger, even. Yeah, two years younger. Um, I guess we'll move him up into that, that nickel role. He got uh, drafted way too high, in my opinion. He was a third-round pick. We look on the defensive line. It's interesting. Jarrell Casey was acquired for nothing. The Titans just shipped him away, and he's still a good player. He really is just a big contract. Um, but great addition to this team. Great addition to the 3-4 front. Shelby Harris is kind of underrated. Christian Covington's okay. Draymond Jones, I loved a ton coming out of Ohio State. Uh, so we'll have to see what he ends up developing into uh, becoming for us. Uh, they also have McTelvin Aguim, who they drafted. I have to change his contract. But it's a solid team overall. This is a ton of potential. In two years, this team could be really, really good uh, in Madden. In real life, it might be even sooner. Judy also got Moss, by the way, if you care. But ton of potential. I am excited for this team. I think this could be a playoff team in year one. I really do. Also, in week three, I am going to bring in the 2021 draft class. I was finally able to download ATL Falcons draft again. So, going to be using that one. We are 1-1-1 one, one, and one at week four. Fantastic. Now, I will show you where you can download this draft class. This is the one that I'm using. Shout out to ATL Falcons. I think he's been pretty receptive to my feedback. So, uh, shout out to him for that. It is his draft class. He could technically do whatever he wants. But this is it. This is the one I've been using. And he updated it just two days ago. And I haven't even done a rebuild in a while. So, um, good timing on that. I've already downloaded it. 
I had such severe issues downloading it before. I'm not even going to worry about re-downloading it all. I'm just going to import it. And this, I th hopefully I put in the right one. This should be it. Damn, no love for these QBs. <laughs> they are all viciously bad. But with some of these guys, though, they kind of should be. Because like a guy like Trey Lance has a ton of potential. He's looked great at North Dakota State, but only in one year. Playing for easily the best team uh, in college football in that subdivision, FCS. So... They're the best team by far. They're way better than everybody. He has a ton of time. He has the best receivers. He's going to be able to make these throws. And you'd like to see him with high development, but maybe not so great right now where we are because Trey Lance could end up being a beast. It's just too soon to tell right now. So you'd like to lean on some of the prospects who are you know more proven, like Trevor Lawrence. Justin Fields has potential, and I do like Justin Fields a lot as a prospect. I feel like he just needs to... Uh, be more consistent because there are a lot of times at Ohio State where he will throw to a wide open receiver and the ball is just not where he needs to be, but you don't really notice it because they're wide open. It's a touchdown either way. Another team that's been pretty dominant. But uh, Fields just needs to work on ball placement and consistency, but he has a ton of potential. I think he's probably a first round talent more than a second round talent at this point. But this class is loaded in. Sertan now the number one corner over Sean Wade. I love to see that. Sean Wade's good. I, Patrick Sertan's on another, on another level. I want to figure out a way to make a Patrick Sertan video about why he's the next great lockdown corner in the NFL, because I truly believe that at this point. He's been incredible in college, but class is loaded in. I'm turning on auto progress players. It's been another big question I get asked. So uh, an auto scout players is what I meant. I do have auto progress on. People always yell at me for not progressing. It's like, it does it for me. Relax. And now, you like that deep voice? I will simulate to the midseason mark. We are not doing well. Two, five, and one. But I don't, you know, I don't need to be good in the first season anyway because that's, you know, the rebuild hasn't started yet. But we are two, five, and one. Uh, not exactly ideal. Not exactly ideal at all. Although the good news is that when Patrick Mahomes enters free agency, he never resigns with the Chiefs. So he should be out of the division. Always good news. We have our punter as our top priority free agent. Anyone else besides Sam Martin? No. So we could re-sign him now for more money. It's not even that much. Give him a seven-year deal. Are you in? You want a higher salary? I could probably arrange for that. So we re-signed Sam Martin. Up the uh, money a little bit. I wish I could see the details. I, but it was, I mean, same details, just I bumped up the uh, salary. That was pretty much it. And we lost again. We are a losing machine. I'm actually not even too mad about it because... We'll get a higher draft pick. We'll turn it into more. Increased player weekly goal XP. We're going to be a beast going into season two. I'm excited for it. So it's good that we're not uh, blowing our load too quickly. We're just sitting on it a little bit. And um, season two, season three, season four, we're going to be in there like swimwear. All right. Didn't make the playoffs. Shocker. Absolute shocker there. Finished 6 9 and 1. Nice. Although not so nice because our offense was terrible. Maybe a lot of that to do with Drew Locke. And our defense was the exact same terrible. We were 27th in the league in everything. So you don't exactly love to see that. But uh, again, it's going to be better in Season 2, I think. Drew Locke, these are not bad numbers. They're just not as good as we need them to be. Rushing. Wait a second. What in the world? Uh, what is up with this... What is going on here? What is up with this playbook? I mean, they barely got any touches, and what they did, they didn't do anything with them. I mean, like 3.3 yards per carry, 3.8 yards per carry. They combined for nine touchdowns. They being Philip Lindsay and Melvin Gordon, of course. Horrific. I mean, I don't know what's going on here with this running back by committee, but it was terrible. Receiving Jerry Judy, great year. 1,100 yards, 10 touchdowns. Cortland Sutton, over 1,000 yards, only three touchdowns. Fant was solid. Melvin Gordon was more of a receiver than a running back, very clearly. Had more receiving yards. And uh, the same amount, or more rushing touchdowns? Same amount of uh, receiving touchdowns as rushing touchdowns. K.J. Hamler was fairly useless, I would say, overall. Philip Lindsay didn't do a whole lot. And then defensively, Alexander Johnson had a very good year, as did Von Miller. 13 tackles for loss for Vaughn, 13 for Drill Casey as well, but 16 sacks for Vaughn. Vonnie Bivashan Miller. 
Gotta love it. Eight and a half sacks for Jarrell Casey, six for Alexander Johnson, who really shouldn't be rushing the passer that often. But these are defensive player of the year type numbers. If he had some interceptions, I think he would win it for sure. We only forced six total interceptions as a team. That's vicious. How many fumbles did we recover? Two. So what is that? Eight total turnovers on the year? That is all-time bad. A.J. Boye with two touchdowns somehow. Wow, this team was awful. Mahomes wins MVP of the 8-8 eight and eight Chiefs. Justin Herbert in there. I doubt we're going to see any Broncos in attendance. AFC Offense Player of the Year, Mahomes. No Broncos. Defense Player of the Year is Vaughn Miller, Alexander Johnson at 5. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Justin Herbert. Jerry Judy at 7. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year, Kenneth Murray for the Chargers. Any Broncos in there? No. Ooh, Super Bowl 54 is one we've seen before, at least in Madden, in Rebuild Land, not in real life. But the battle for Texas, the Cowboys versus the Texans, that is always a fun one to see because it just that's an amazing storyline. Gotta love that. And it was a murder. 28 to 3, Cowboys won the Super Bowl. Not the result that we're looking for. I feel like, I feel like uh, only Cowboys fans would want the Cowboys to win there. Uh, I feel like a lot of people don't like the Cowboys. Not even just a Giants fan like me who, you know, they're the division rival. But uh, there's nobody in free agency I would have any interest in. Maybe Levi Wallace, honestly, but we're going to pass on that. We have our kicker. We have our punter. We are good to go. So not going to worry at all about that. We're just going to simulate to the... Uh, not the draft, because I want to see if we are going to have to pick up a uh, fifth-year option on anyone. And of course, we have to. Garrett Bowles, that is an absolute, immediate, automatic, no, 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 automatic decline. <laughs> I made a mistake, and I'm like, that's not what we want. But uh, we managed to find that mistake, not actually make it. And Garrett Bowles will be off the team in two years, I can guarantee you. As we will, well, I can't guarantee, but I think, I think he's not going to be here. So now it is time for the NFL draft. The Seahawks hold the number one overall pick unreal all right let's see how this shakes out seahawks go with panay sewell would they ever draft an offensive lineman probably never <laughs> sir tan to the jags their cornerback duo with now cj henderson becomes incredible rousseau to the niners they get even more help on the defensive line jamar chase lions love to draft receivers we know that trevor lawrence is the replacement for big ben he goes at number five sean wade to the packers they upgrade cornerback Redskins at 7. Go Leatherwood at Alabama. Their Trent Williams replacement. Cardinals go Marvin Wilson. They get a stud defensive tackle up the middle. And then the Jets right before us take Micah Parsons out of Penn State. So we do have some options. The question is, what direction do I want to go in? Let me tell you, I want Javon Holland. I want to rebuild this no-fly zone. I want, I want this pick so badly. I feel like we have to go Dylan Moses. Just because we need linebacker more than safety at this point. Kareem Jackson could slide down and play nickel corner. And then we'd move Justin Simmons over to strong safety. That'd be a really good setup. It really would be. But is that the best for this team? Tackle or offensive line in general. Something I think we're going to address in the second round. Paulson Adebo is probably not who we want at this spot. I mean, have I talked myself into Javon Holland? I think I have. We're going to take him. Recreating the no-fly zone. Javon Holland out of Oregon. He, along with Patrick Sertan, he's another player I'd want to do a featured like college football spotlight profile on. I think Javon Holland's another guy that's just going to be an absolute monster. And I think he's going to have a crazy 2020 season. I, okay, if you just saw what I just did, it was checking over my right to see the time, see the calendar, to confirm that it's 2020 like I didn't already know that. It's not like it's, it's you know, I have to check over and see, oh, it's 10, 12. He's going to have a crazy um, 11 o'clock time or whatever. I literally had to confirm that it was 2020. I'm an, I'm an idiot. But Javon Holland, welcome to the team. Ranked at number nine. We took him at number 10. 76 overall star or better development. 76 overall is awesome. 91 speed. He could be even faster. Uh, 77 zone coverage, 80 hit power, 80 pursuit. 77 tackle, 91 acceleration. I think he's just such a stud. And we're going to shake up the secondary a little bit. Shaking up the team. It's what we need to do in order to win. I like what we're doing. 
So now the question becomes, what else do we want to take? Tough Borland. Tough Borland would be tough. <laughs> do you get it? It's his name. <laughs> it's, a nick it's a nickname. Uh, but Tough Borland would be tough to pass up here in the second round. I did say we wanted to go on the offensive line. There's not a ton here that I would really want to take. So it looks like Tough Borland's going to be the pick here. Welcome to the Denver Broncos, 73 overall, ranked at number 31. We took him at 42. Star or better development. Decent enough speed, good tackle, good hit power, good coverage. Tough Borland is the newest Denver Bronco. In the third, I'm taking Devontae Smith. The value is too good to pass up here. Solid fourth receiver. He's got 74 overall and star or better development. Number 20 in the class, and we took him at number 69. Nice. 91 speed to go along with pretty good route running very solid catching Devontae smith is a beast and a new addition to our team very excited about that one and we pick again a little bit later as trey lance goes in the third round to the new york jets this might be a trick that i or a pick that i trade down although there is a very solid player still available i also also saw caden stearns there and aiden hutchinson out of michigan still a first round talent still available would be good depth on our defensive line we're going to take him 73 overall ranked at number 27 in the class we took him at 74 star or better development as well this draft has gone extremely well for us so far if i do say so myself trading a four or five and a six for a three next year for the patriots they might still be pretty good so that might end up just being like a fourth and i'm going to simulate the rest of the draft it's only a six and a seven so we are golden ready to start season number two i'm going to need this team to be a whole lot better here in season two Looks like the CPU actually drafted Greg Island for us. 23-year-old uh, year old rookie. 65 overall, star better development. Is there a spot for him on the offensive line? Uh, yeah, there is. He's going to start over Garrett Bowles because of his uh, development trait and the fact that I'm going to keep him on the team. Garrett Bowles is done. Like, we are not keeping him. It makes no sense to cut him, but he's not staying around. I'll tell you that much. So Kareem Jackson has, of course, regressed already. He's down to an 84. He's 32. So he was never going to be in the long-term future of this team anyway. So what he's going to do is slide down to corner where he's going to be our prominent, primary, predominant nickel corner. A lot of P words there. Uh, it almost seemed like I said the wrong one and then tried to search for the right one until I found it. Uh, Justin Simmons is going to play strong safety. He can easily do that. He's played that role before, and he's played it at a very high level. Javon Holland is going to be my ball hawking. Typical center field free safety. Has the athleticism, has the speed to do so. We're going to stick him at free safety. Tough Borland's going to start over Todd Davis just because he's more in the future than Todd Davis is. Todd Davis is close to 30, I want to say. He had 28. So he has hit that age in Madden where he can no longer progress. Sucks, but that's the way it is. Uh, Hutchinson, I'm not sure I want to start over Draymond Jones, but I mean, I guess we could. I want Draymond Jones to play significant snaps, though. I guess I'll move him to defensive tackle. I know we're in a 3-4, so it's not like he's going to play a ton as a, as a secondary defensive tackle, but I, it's what we got right now. So this is the offense for Season 2. We're going to get Jake Butt over... Uh, Jake Butt over Jeff Hireman. I don't know if I, I screwed up their first names for the first like the first time I said it. I probably didn't, but I may have. It happens uh, sometimes when I'm recording these. And this is what the defense will look like. This is what we have the specialists rocking with at the moment. Everything looks pretty solid, I would say, overall. Hopefully the team comes out and actually performs this time. We were so bad in Season 1. I don't want any repeats here. And the reason I have not spent my coach XP is because I want to use it on quarterback training boost. And hopefully at the midseason mark, I should be able to do that. But I, the faster Drew Locke becomes a beast, the faster this team is going to be really solid. So I'll see you guys at the midseason mark, as always, in the second season here of these draft rebuilds. I'm not going to load in any type of draft class, just because we don't know yet. So auto CPU generated is what we default to. All right, here we are, midseason mark. We are three and four, so I guess slightly better. The AFC West is a real coin toss right now. The West is just full of talented upcoming teams, or teams on the rise, I should say, up and coming. We're not in a great spot. Philip Lindsay is our top priority free agent, although I will say 
I'm not sure that this town is big enough for the two of them. These two running backs, Philip Lindsay and Melvin Gordon. I feel like it's throwing off a lot of the simulation when you have two good running backs. Something is just is not working with the two of them. Who would I rather have? Melvin Gordon or Philip Lindsay? Do I keep the hometown Colorado undrafted guy, comes in the league, leads the league in rushing, only 26 years old, but eh, I don't know. He's, he's very solid. Or do we go with Melvin Gordon? The highly recruited Wisconsin running back that was drafted in the first round. Broke the record for rushing yards in a game in college before that was taken over by uh, Samaj P. Ryan. 27 is a lower overall. Do I bother paying Philip Lindsay when we have Melvin Gordon on the squad? Not sure. Two years remaining on that contract. It might be time for Philip Lindsay to go. Also, I mean, like, I just can't pay Alexander Johnson when he's 28 years old and is only going to regress from here on out. Very, very tough for me to pay him. You're paying for worse than what you're getting. I can't do that. Brandon McManus, I'd negotiate with a kicker in actual free agency. Jake Butt is a backup tight end, as is Jeff Hireman. Jake Butt, what do you want? Three mil per year. I'd rather look elsewhere. Bulls is done. I told you guys that. So the only real player I want here is, oh, maybe none of them. Philip Lindsay, four and a half per year, probably at worst. We'll offer him a bit lower. See if he takes this. And uh, he does not. He doesn't like anything about it, except for the contract length. I don't know. I, I'm so mixed on these players right now. We're three and four. Whatever we're doing is not resulting in success at the moment. So I'm looking to mix things up. Not sure that re-signing those guys is the best idea. And we did not make the playoffs again. 6-10. and ten. We actually somehow ended up being worse than we were last year. How do we manage that? That is uh, deplorable. Disgraceful. Terrible. I don't know what's going on with this team. And Javon Holland, by the way, clearly has at least superstar development. We were the 25th offense. 18th best defense. All around terrible. I'm not keeping two running backs. Drew Locke was decent except through for almost no touchdowns. We don't score. That's the problem. We do not score. We have no running game. Receiving, I mean, what are these numbers? KJ Hamler, 69 catches. Nice. Over 1,000 yards, 7 touchdowns. Pretty good. I mean, you'll take that season. But what's going on with the rest of these guys? I mean, Jerry Judy averaging less than 10 yards per catch is insane. Defensively, Tough Borland had a solid rookie year. Shelby Harris had 14 tackles for loss. Sacks, I mean, Von Miller didn't even get double digits. Interceptions, four for Kareem Jackson, three for Alexander Johnson, who's not going to be on the team next year because of his age. And I know it's, oh, it's only 28. I, he will regress. This is not real life. I have to take it like it's Madden. Tannehill wins MVP of the seven and nine Titans. What the hell? I mean, you're not going to see any Broncos in there, clearly. Ryan Tannehill wins Offensive Player of the Year. No, Bron actually, Drew Locke at number nine. Defensive Player of the Year, CJ Mosley. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Trevor Lawrence. No Broncos. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Tough Borland. I'll take that. Javon Holland at six. Aiden Hutchinson at eight. We got to take what we can because we are not doing well right now. Offense and defense is terrible. We're going to look for a complete overhaul of the entire team, the playbooks. I'm going to switch to a 4 3. Drew Locke is nearing an 80. So that's better. But we need an offensive playbook that's going to better showcase his ability. We're going to improve the offensive line. This team has potential. But in order to showcase the full potential, we got to be, you know, out with the old, in with the new. Hutchinson, defensive tackle. Jarrell Casey, defensive tackle. Von Miller, left end. Bradley Chubb, right end. Maybe Johnson earns a second contract. Javon Holland has superstar development, by the way. We need better corners. But 3-4 defenses just don't seem to work in simulation. And we know whatever offense is happening is not working at all in simulation. So we have to figure out something new. Seahawks in the Super Bowl versus the Chargers. And they win it. Did they fix the glitch where like the logo is on the wrong side of the score sometimes? 
we're going to assume that they did because now I've seen it twice where it's good. Philip Lindsay, 27 years old. Alexander Johnson's 29 has already regressed. Uh, I just don't want to. I don't want to sign you. You're way too expensive. I can't. I can't do it. We're throwing away money. Philip Lindsay, there's just no point with Melvin Gordon. There just isn't. Uh, ooh, Tuck Borland got his XP for Defensive Rookie of the Year. Let's go into pass coverage. We got him at right outside linebacker now, by the way, so his overall jumped up a little bit. As he goes up to an 80 overall. I mean, Melvin Gordon is also regressing. As he at 28. We're going to trade Melvin Gordon. We're going to re-sign Philip Lindsay. That's the play. All right, Philip Lindsay returns. There we go. All right, near 50 mil. Show me Mahomes. Mahomes is not here. No, I need him to get out of the division. Maybe it's... I thought it was in year two. Maybe it's in the third year now. I'm not sure. What do we need here? Let's think about it. Don't need defensive tackle that badly now that we have Jarrell Casey, Aiden Hutchinson on the inside. Could use one. I'm not sure Rankins is the answer. Raekwon McMillan. That's who we need. Ooh, Ruben Foster. That's another guy we absolutely need to add to the team. He's going to play outside linebacker for us in the 4-3, and he should be phenomenal. Ah, oh, we got both of them. Ruben Foster and Raekwon McMillan. The best of the Big Ten and the best of the SEC. They were some of the you know two best linebackers while they were both there. And I think they were both there at the same time. Now, do I have a kicker? Yeah, we do not have Brandon McManus. So we're going to want to bring him back. And we should be able to get him for nothing. And we got Brandon McManus. Fifth year option on Bradley Chubb. Definitely going to accept that. We don't want to be paying edge rushers right now. So I think picking up his fifth year option is a, a very, very easy yes. NFL draft time. Probably going to flip Melvin Gordon for a first round pick somehow. That's just something that will happen. We pick inside the top five. I got to remember to make these trades. Who else do I want to move in the meantime? I need to move around some of the positions a little bit. Receiving core is phenomenal. We don't necessarily need these four studs, but there's nothing wrong with keeping it that way. And then Raekwon on the inside, Ruben Foster at left outside linebacker. Now we have a really good linebacking core. Our secondary solid might look to draft a corner. Might look to draft a corner here. And um, corner and offensive line, I think we're going to be set. Our offensive line's pretty bad, but receiver's great. Quarterback's good. Running back's going to be fine. Tight end's fine. We need backups, though. And I feel like our defense, for the most part, is fine. Maybe, maybe defensive tackle is in that conversation as well, but really just corner and offensive line. Not afraid to move up. We'll figure something out. Ooh, Jonathan Guerrero goes at four. He was a left guard I would have considered. And now I am in between a few players because I need these cornerbacks. Joe Locke could be locked down. I think everyone knew where that corny joke was going. Ron Clem uh, looks very solid. Tyler Kerr looks very solid. These are very good players. I'd like all three of them. It's just probably not possible. Now, if I could trade down one spot somehow and pick up value, that'd be ideal. I just don't... There's, there's nothing we could really do. Um... Who, who matters more? It's just such a strong cornerback class. The offensive line class is fairly weak overall. I mean, maybe Clinton Boone is even better than uh, Clem. How far down the board is he? Only 13. I think that's a safer bet, though, to take a cornerback and then try to move up. If we can get three first-round picks, I'd happily do that. But I want at least one of these cornerbacks now. The question becomes, who's better, Joe Locke or Tyler Kerr? They're very, very similar players. Which one do I like better? Which one do I like better? Same exact combine grade, too. I mean, it's tough. I think I'm going to go Tyler Kerr because he's slightly faster. Yeah, we're gonna. I'm just going to take him. He is a 76 overall, ranked at number 5. We drafted him at 5. And uh, saw a better development. I'll take that. He's going to start right away. Not a great man cover corner, but decent speed. Good zone coverage. Good press. Doesn't catch all that well. Doesn't shed blocks that well, but good awareness. This is a solid player. There goes another corner. It wasn't even one I was considering taking. Austin McCoy. And then there's another one in front of Joe Locke. Eugene Brackenridge. So he might go before. But I, I feel like Locke's going to go before him. Just because that's the way the game usually works a lot. There he goes. 75 overall. 
So we definitely made the right decision. So I'm happy about that. And there goes Ron Clem. I'm fine with that. He's a 76 overall. I think now is the time to make a move as I look to trade Melvin Gordon to the Steelers. All right, really convoluted trade here, but Juwan James is leaving us. 77 overall right tackle, getting older to the point of regression, 14 mil cap hit. I'm out on that. We're trading a third round pick this year, a fourth next year. In return, we're getting the number nine overall pick, Chris Boswell and Khalid Hill. Those are all trades for cap purposes, although Chris Boswell is now uh, the best kicker on our team. So we could, in theory, keep him. Or you could keep Brandon McManus for cheaper. I'm not carrying two kickers, I'll tell you that. With the ninth overall pick, I mean, we don't even have to take Clinton Boone right here. Wait, did that other corner go that I was watching? I don't even see him anymore. I mean, there's another really solid one in Antoine Thorpe that I liked a lot. But where did, uh... Where did the other one just go? Did I miss him? I guess I did. I guess he got drafted. But I'm not going to wait any longer. Clinton Boone, that's our Jawan James replacement. And he's already better because he's a number one player in the draft. Only normal development. Of course, he comes out wearing that nice 69 as the best player in the entire class. You dirty dog. 95 strength. Put up 40 reps on the bench press. Great pass block. Great run block. Great everything. Clinton Boone is a monster and certainly worth the number nine overall pick. Way better. Way better than Jawan James already. He's cheaper. He's a higher overall. He's younger. What more do you want? Dude, this is the absolute smallest amount of they're not interested. So this is a future seventh round pick and they'll accept this trade. There's no cap room. There's no wiggle room at all. So we just absolutely have to offer the worst thing possible. And the trade is accepted. Melvin Gordon, Shelby Harris, we don't need anymore. And a future seven for the number 12 overall pick. And I hope that corner is still available. Teams always reach on players. And there goes the cornerback, Eugene Brackenridge, 69 overall. Not so nice for them in that particular instance. But going to the draft board, we're taking the corner. Antoine Thorpe at 12. I don't care about the reach. He's a beast. Clearly, the number three overall player in the entire draft. And they're giving him Champ Bailey's 24. Ridiculous. He's a 77 overall, though, a star, better development. Top five player in the draft. Decent enough, man. Good zone. Great speed. Great player. Antoine Thorpe is an animal. What do we want to do here at the top of the second? Not going to take a running back. Could go back up tight end. Could do that. Your Keontae? I don't know. Really? I'm pressing X to doubt. Let's go with a tackle here. Jimmy Bush, 69 overall. Nice, only normal development. He's number 31. We took him at 37. Not real, really a player that's going to come in and start right away. We just kind of don't need him. I was just hoping for a development trait. Maybe we'll get somebody good in the third round, but I kind of doubt it. And there goes Keontae Burrell. He was a 70. Okay. Last guy here is Richard Burton. Welcome to the team. 69 overall. Also number 32. Took him at 76. Nice. Uh, good strength, and that is it. It's going to do it for the draft. I do actually, though, want to see the draft recap. I want to see what happened to that corner, Kerr. I want to see how good he is. And I want to see if Keontae Burrell had star better development. I pray that he didn't because I just missed him. Oh, I took Kerr at five. That's where he went. Oh, okay. You guys are probably like, you're an idiot. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> what the hell? I totally forgot we drafted him. And um, Keontae Burrell here. He does have star better development. Uh, show me star only. All right. I, at least that makes it a little easier. But he would have been a player that would have been a nice addition to our team. Kareem Jackson has regressed down to a 77. Might be time to cut him only a three mil penalty i don't know if we'll be able to trade him i want to trade bryce callahan i want to trade aj boye because i want these rookie cornerbacks to start one of these guys has to go probably two of them i'm going to turn kareem jackson back into a strong safety and then try to trade him along with the corner so i can package the two of them in the same trade now he might not have any interest from a team but 
at a 79 overall, there's at least a chance, I would say. I mean, Bryce Callahan's 29, Boye's 30. Both of these guys are getting paid over 8 mil per year. I can keep one of them. It doesn't even really matter. I mean, he has zero career interceptions. And so what? Why is that not tracking? Because in 2017, he had two. In 2018, he had two. Yet it shows 16 for, uh, AJ, uh, for AJ Boye. Why does he have zero listed? It's just not accurate. I feel like Bryce Callahan is more suited to the nickel. So I'd be uh, more willing to trade AJ Boye. Now, does Kareem Jackson have any value for any team? Oh, he does. The Lions. That's our trade destination. If we can make it work for the cap. And I don't think we're going to be able to unless we make a huge trade. Yeah, I'm not sure we're going to be able to do anything here. They're negative 14 mil right now. So we'd have to acquire a ton. And there's no one that we can really get comfortably. Except for Matt Stafford. And then that would be someone we would either trade or cut. And I don't want Stafford. We're in a weird spot. Kareem Jackson, a third and a sixth, gets us a Panthers first rounder. So we're doing very well to move around players for cap space. Boye is going to be a little bit trickier to move just because he has a huge contract as well. Um, and that was one of the teams who had a ton of cap space. Now they have a lot less. So it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see what our actual options really turn into. There's so many teams in here that have interest, but no cap room. Tough. AJ Boye, a second, gets this David DeCastro and Mario Edwards. Mario Edwards was just for cap purposes, but our offensive line increases uh, or improves greatly with the addition of David DeCastro. I think it'd be wise to just play him at left tackle. I think that would just be better for us. What's his contract looking like? One year remaining. So mm, we'll pay him and then maybe move him to left tackle. We're still rocking with Island. I mean, he's not too bad. 24 years old. Only been in the league one year. 69 overall. Could be better. Not a great left tackle to have, but the team's definitely solid. The move to David DeCastro... Oh, God, man, we have to. David DeCastro is going to play left tackle. We'll just pay him more. We have the money. We've made sure of that. We need to improve our offensive line. And David DeCastro, certainly at left tackle, improves that the most. Graham Glasgow can stay starting at right guard. This is the best possible setup for our offensive line. Receiving core is fantastic. Defensively, we are in a great spot. And um, Bryce Callahan is going to be our third corner. And he's going to be stuck in the nickel he's going to be our slot corner that should change around here in a second it's not going to kerr is not going to be our slot corner I'm, i promise you team looks great for season three yeah the catcher is not a left tackle but he has the size in the frame for that at 6'5, 316 kind of ideal tackle size maybe you're looking at 6'6 is like the ideal ideal perfect tackle but he, he has a size he has the ability been one of the best guards in the nfl for the past uh few years if not several years Certainly going to work out and be a very good left tackle for us. This is the best spot for the offensive line. We have our backup tight ends. Troy Fumagalli. Um, I don't even know if I know your first name. Dan Arnold. I don't, yeah, I don't think I knew that. Receiving core looks great. And then defensively, I mean, this is as good as it can be. We just got to keep developing these guys. I'm excited for season three. Bryce Callahan in the slot. Things should be looking good. I'm going to spend my coach XP and let's get after it. I will see you at the mid-season mark. So up to week nine, we're doing all right. Four and three. That's the top of the division actually by a lot. I mean, our season hasn't gone all that great for us, but we are managing to hold the division. We beat the Chiefs, huge game. We beat the Chargers, huge game. Barely though. I mean, we're just so narrowly winning these games but they're so important because they are division opponents we haven't lost to a division opponent yes uh, yet but that could change because we have a ton of games coming up a lot of potential for success here very early by let's not screw this up let's dominate the rest of the season we can do this now it's going to get expensive here I don't care that Von Miller's 32 we're re-signing him Justin Simmons absolutely Cortland Sutton absolutely Bryce Callahan no Graham Glasgow, probably no. Royce Freeman, we don't really need a backup running back that badly. Let me tell you, though. The first four 
absolutely we need to bring them back no matter what it takes 100 mil to get it done very doable david de castro is back huge one squared away von miller wants to get paid i mean we're gonna have to pay him so we're gonna give him his contract not a ton of money honestly i mean it is but for one of the best edge rushers in the league still not that much i mean usually those guys are getting paid closer to 17 18 uh, five-year contract for Justin Simmons. Increase the bonus, maybe take the salary down slightly. And he wants more salary. All right. We'll deal with that later. And then Cortland Sutton, another guy I want to offer a five-year deal. Increase that slightly under 10 in first year. Wants higher salary. All right, we're going to deal with him and Justin Simmons in the next week. But four and three, we're on pace to win the division. I mean, things are going pretty well. 85 overall offense and defense and team. Got to beat the one and six Chargers here. We cannot lose to them. Cannot lose. We beat them by three again. These are narrow victories that we're just, just squeaking out, squeezing out these wins. We need, we need to do something more. We need to win these games by multiple touchdowns. I mean, showcase that this team's unreal. I don't want just to be barely sneaking into the playoffs. I want this team to dominate. All right, higher salary for Justin Simmons and Cortland Sutton. Both back and both going to be big additions to our team for the future, even though they're already on the team. I get that. Bryce Callahan, again, no. Uh, we'll deal with the rest of these guys later. I think we're probably just going to look to continue to build through the draft and free agency rather than re-signing those players who are aging and regressing. But it is time for the playoffs. Hopefully, we are in them. We made the playoffs. Barely. Snuck in at 10-6. and six. Do we win the division? No! The Chiefs came out of nowhere to win the division. That is very frustrating. But we still made the playoffs. We're at an 87 overall. Things could be a whole lot worse right now. As I will upgrade probably the linebackers. If we're getting more training boosts or more XP. It's a solid team. We'll take a look at the stats and see how we performed. 14th best offense. Drew Locke had a much better season individually. And our defense was ranked the exact same. Drew Locke, very solid season. Rushing, Philip Lindsay, terrible still. I mean, wh why is he so bad? I don't get it, but he is terrible. In simulation, doesn't do anything. Cortland Sutton, great year. Jerry Judy, great year. Noah Fant, great year. KJ Hamler, great year as a third receiver. Philip Lindsay got involved in the passing game, as did Royce Freeman, Rolls Royce. Defensively, Tyler Kerr had 106 tackles. How is that even possible? Didn't have an interception. I don't know how we have a corner who's a boundary corner, not even playing in the nickel, lead our team in tackles. That's bewildering. I guess he was allowing a lot of catches. I mean, how many catches did this guy allow? 43? I mean, that feels like kind of a lot. I don't really have anything to compare that to for what it would be in Madden. Uh, tackles for loss. We have 17 from Von Miller. Also put up double-digit sacks, but Bradley Chubb led the way with 11. 7 for Jarrell Casey. 5 for Tough Borland. Interceptions, 3 for Raekwon. 2 for the rookie Antoine Thorpe out of Washington State. Although, we might have had uh, our rookie who led the team in tackles win Rookie of the Year because of how important tackles are, but no interceptions. Maybe we'll hold that down a little bit. Awards are going to be strange. I think Drew Locke's going to get some MVP votes. Um... He does. Finishes at number 10. AFC Offensive Player of the Year, Lamar Jackson. Uh, Drew Locke at number 6. Did I say Andrew Luck? I sure hope not. Defensive Player of the Year, Jerome Baker. Any Broncos? Not that I can see. Offensive Rookie of the Year, the running back, Sylvester Chamberlain for the Texans. No Broncos. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year is Tyler Kerr, Antoine Thorpe at 2. So Broncos at 1 and 2 there. I wonder if we want anything individually for, like, best DB, no, best LB, no, best D-line. Goes to J.J. Watt over Von Miller. Don't like that. And then best O-lineman, no Broncos in there as well. No Broncos anywhere to be found. So we're going to upgrade our team. It'll be interesting to see if anyone has superstar development that we drafted. I hope so, but it's looking unlikely. Obviously, no one on the offensive line uh, did because we only drafted one at right tackle, and he didn't have it. Defensively, any corner... Both star development. Yeah, when I upgraded the players, and uh, after the upgrade, it didn't say, oh, new uh, ability unlocked. I'm like, they don't have superstar. So not exactly shocked to see star there. A little bit disappointing, but it is what it is. The fact of the matter is that here in year three, we have Andrew Luck coming out of retirement to play for the New England Patriots. 
in the playoffs and we are on the road in Gillette. Tough place to play. This game is not going to be easy. So we're down 5-0 because we got safetyed. You, you can't write this stuff. I mean, it only happens to me. We're down 22-6. to Our offense just cannot score. I don't know what it is. Our offense just with the Broncos so far in this rebuild has been so terrible. We're down 25-6. to We're finally scoring some points, but it's too little too late. We've made it a game, but we're going to lose 25-20. to The offense just didn't show up. I don't know how we do this so consistently, but we don't do anything. This offense is terrible. Seahawks beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl. Bryce Callahan is a free agent. He's going to be down to like 78. Yeah, 78, so I don't want him back. No point in offering Royce Freeman a contract. Yeah, he's a good power running back, but... I mean, we do need a backup anyway. If he accepts this, I'm game, but I'm not going to give him any more money. Obviously not going to franchise tag him, and I guess he returns. Graham Glasgow can go. We'll offer him, uh, you know, a contract in free agency if he is the best one there. Otherwise, we'll just try to bring in somebody better. Oh, okay. Drew Locke is up to superstar development. That's what I'm talking about there. He just got it. I don't know why. I'm, I'm not complaining. I mean, that's pretty cool. Defensively, tough. Borland gets superstar. That's what I like to see. Would have been nice for Kerr to get anything for Defensive Rookie of the Year besides just a little bit of XP. I don't care about that. I want you to have superstar development, clearly. He goes up to an 81 overall. I'm changing his number. This is not the Cowboys. We don't give, you know, 88 out to all the good receivers. 24 is Champ Bailey. He's my second favorite player ever. He's going to keep 24 forever. No other 24s on this team. Damn, the CPU signed Christian Fulton for us at some point. I do need another corner. And I do need a right guard. Tremaine Edmonds is here. He has not been offered a contract. He is not terribly expensive. And he is 24 years old. When he was drafted, I believe he was 19. Which is uh, pretty unbelievable. Uh, no, he might have been, he might have been 20. He might have been 20. No, he was 19. 19 years, 11 months, 24 days. That's why I remember that. He was a teenager when he got drafted. So he's still super young, even though he has the experience. I'm going to offer him a deal. And he just might accept that outright, which would be very, very nice. I can even take the money down on that to see if he uh, accepts a low ball contract immediately. 76 total points will do. And then Jason Kelsey's there. He'll play left guard if I have to. Connor Williams... DJ Fluker's not ideal. Uh, Jack Conklin is okay. Yeah, I think Jason Kelsey's going to be who we sign. And then uh, I'll maybe move Paradis over to guard or or Kelsey over to guard or something. But probably Paradis. Nope, nope. We don't have Paradis. Did I say Paradis? I, I read that. I meant Lloyd Cushenberry. But uh, yeah, I definitely want to bring in Jason Kelsey. And if we don't get Kelsey, I'll just draft somebody. So it's not really a big deal either way. So we got AJ Terrell, and we got Jason Kelsey. Boom. Terrell comes in. He's our third corner. That's fine. Jason Kelsey is going to start at center. We're going to move Lloyd Cushenberry over to guard, even though I think he is a, definitely a true center opposed to a guard. It is Madden. So we're going to move Lloyd Cushenberry over to right guard. That's our offensive line shirt up. The Cardinals are coming in, so I am going to pull my offer on Tremaine Edmonds. We didn't really need him anyway. It just would have been nice. He would have been an upgrade. But we didn't really need to pay a player like that. So, you going to pull that offer, save our money, and then, of course, pick up the fifth year on Noah Fant. Although, we are headed into the final season, so this really won't even matter. Simulating to the 18th pick, we also pick again at 24. Not really sure what I want, honestly. I mean, the team's pretty good. Just about development at this point. And based on my draft board, it looks like we're going offensive line. So it's what's going to happen. CJ Bowling, welcome to the team. Ooh, number four in the draft. 77 overall. Star or better development? Sorry, Lloyd Cushenberry. You are uh, away now. I mean, CJ Bowling's going to start. Number four in the draft. I mean, that's, that's perfect. And he's a true guard. I like this pick a lot. And then at 24, I suppose we could double up here and go offensive line again. Juwan Cloud, why not? You know, that was a good move. He's number three in the class. Also star, better development. 77 overall. Very, very solid player. Run block specialist. 
How do we get all these guys involved? That is a good question. We're going to figure it out. There we go from Jawan James to Jawan Cloud. No, it's not spelled the same, but it's close. It sounds the same or similar. Ooh, we got a baller. It's been a while since we took somebody who skipped the combines. Hey, Roger Goodell. You. All right. I don't know. I don't know. We, we don't curse so much on the channel anymore. Uh, but who fucking cares, I guess. William Powell, 69 overall. Nice. We knew he was a baller when he skipped the combine. He's all right. And that is going to be the end of the draft. So just because of the development trait, I know this is odd. I like Dalton Reisner a lot as a player. I'm actually shocked he doesn't have star development. But based on his age and his normal development, he's going to be benched for Cloud. We got to rip fat clouds, and he's, Reisner's just not a part of that. Uh, and then Bowling's going to start at right guard. You guys remember Clint Bowling? Well, this is a CJ. Oh, how funny would it be if Clint Bowling's middle name started with a J? And that's probably pretty doable, like James or something like that. Doesn't even have a middle name, maybe? All right. No middle name was listed. That's uh, strange. Most people, I would say, uh, have middle names. But this is the team. I wish we had a better second defensive tackle, but we'll make do. This is the squad. I mean, we're in a pretty good spot, I would say, overall. So I'm excited about this. I didn't even know AJ Terrell had uh, upgrade points. So we will spend those and simulate to the midseason mark. I think this team can be pretty successful. Now it's all about them going out and proving that. Just stop the simulation at week four. We're 0-3. This game sucks. Have I mentioned that before? I think so. I mean, it's just so frustrating. How is this team 0-3? I mean, every time. So, we, you know what's funny is that we have the number one defense. Our offense is just ranked 24th. I really don't want to tell you about that. I don't know what to tell you. I think the 0-3 could be just, like, random bad luck, which is possible. Teams can get off to bad starts, although uh, these have been terrible games for us. I mean, we've scored so few points. 21 in the first week is not too bad, but then seven in back-to-back -back weeks, you're just not going to beat many teams scoring seven points. You got to score more, and we're just not doing that. It's bewildering. Hopefully, we were just getting unlucky, and our team can turn it around and actually start winning some games. We're in the battle for the first win against the Dolphins. We're both 0-3, and, and uh, we're 2-5-1 and one now. We just beat the Colts 27-0, though. That's encouraging. We are dead last in the AFC West, but there is a chance with a win here against the Raiders going into our bye week that we can rebound and actually make a play for a playoff push, but it seems unlikely in my opinion. So I've done a couple things here. I've re-signed Drew Locke, KJ Hamler, Jarrell Casey said no, and Bradley Chubb. There are a lot of offensive linemen that are up to be re-signed, Lloyd Cushenberry, Dalton Reisner, and Jason Kelsey. I really only need to keep one of those three, and I might do another final season. We're going to have two final seasons. This happens sometimes. Uh, bowling has superstar development. That is fantastic. So he's going nowhere. Cloud has star. I think he's still going to start. But if we keep Jason Kelsey, our offensive line looks incredible. Our receiving core is great. Defensively, I mean, we're in a really good spot. The team just has to start winning games, and it comes down to our offense which has been so inept. Hopefully we'll make the playoffs, although I doubt it. If we win out, we can make the playoffs. We just have to win out, I think. We did not make the playoffs. Uh, finished 6-9-1 and one again. There's nothing I can do. I can build a team. They're either going to perform or they won't, and they didn't. 26 best, best offense again. I can't do anything, man. It doesn't matter how good the team is. It doesn't matter. It's just either they're going to be great or they're not. And they suck. Browns and Redskins in the Super Bowl. The Browns make the Super Bowl every single year. They do. I, I use their playbook and we lose exclusively. I mean, it just sucks so, 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 so bad. Did Jason Kelsey retire? We don't have him anymore. I do know that. Jarrell Casey got Superstar X Factor. That's interesting. Yep. No more, uh, no more Jason Kelsey. So Lloyd Cushenberry is going to be my option here. And uh, we absolutely have to sign him. So I'm going to give him a little bit more money. And he returns. Ojemudia can walk. Don't care. Chris Boswell can walk. Don't care. Jarrell Casey. I do want to bring back, even though he's old. Superstar X Factor could be pretty useful for us. And he will return. 
also going to sign Ricky Seals Jones. We have a backup tight end. This is actually the final year no matter what. And when I say no matter what, I mean we're going to not make the playoffs and lose again because the game sucks. Thank you for watching the video. We pick at number nine. Um, I don't even know what position we need. I feel like we're pretty good overall. I'm not sure any position where we could really upgrade. We have a 91 overall defense, 88 overall offense. What do we need? What would we ever draft here? Maybe offensive line, but there's not really a point. Receiver, completely fine. Running back, probably fine. Maybe we'll trade Philip Lindsay for a stud. Maybe a backup linebacker, but we're drafting for a backup. No corner is going to come in and start. We have four good ones. Problem is there are extremely great tackles in this class. So this would be the time to draft them. But also, it's worth noting, we don't need them at all. This is last year. All right, we have a first round pick here in the top 10. And then we don't have uh, any for a while. Now we could go with the tackle just because they're sick. I feel like we might as well. Like, maybe they'll start. Who knows? Now, which tackle do I want? Tyron Knight looks pretty good. I will tell you that. Raymond McMullen looks pretty good. Darian Crockett looks exceptional. He's going to be my pick here. Darian Crockett, welcome to the team. He is a 79 overall, ranked number one in the class. Star or better development. He might start at right tackle right away. He is too lower overall, but he also has better development than normal. So maybe that's the move. We'll take a speed rushing defensive tackle here. He's not really going to play that much. 69 overall. While it is nice, it's not useful. I'm going to simulate to the end. So I've changed around the offensive line quite a bit. Crockett is actually going to start at left tackle. DeCastro has been moved back to right guard. And then Cloud's going to play center because he has the lowest strength of any offensive lineman. This is our best overall offensive line that we can set up. And uh, I, I wish we had a stud running back. Maybe I'll try to trade one or trade for one since it's the last season. I'll trade Philip Lindsay. This is the defense. It looks fantastic. It really does. The cornerbacks are a little bit of a low overall, but not really. And um, yeah, Philip Lindsay's got to go. I'm going to try to trade for a stud. I think we'll be able to. Picks plus offensive lineman we don't need equals stud running back. All right, Philip Lindsay, Lloyd Cushenberry, and a first round pick for Ezekiel Elliott. Would I ever trade that in real life? I don't think either team would make that trade, honestly. Don't think a first round pick is uh, worth spending on a running back, honestly. But this is the team. The addition of Ezekiel Elliott, I think, is going to completely turn around our offense. We got to win now, man. We have to. Five and two. Okay, that's so much better than where we have been. Although the Chargers are six and two. Where do we rank? 14th best offense and seventh best defense we need the offense to step up please we're up to a 90 overall 93 offense 87 defense something's got to give man we're so close to the playoffs these are the playbooks that i've been running i moved to dallas tennessee is what we just changed to it seems like we're slightly better although not much please can we make the playoffs please Yes, first round by 12 and 4. Unbelievable. Finally, eighth best offense. What best defense? It's got to be faster. Fourth. I'll take that. I will take fourth. Drew Locke, very good year rushing. Yeah, I mean, the addition is he carried our offense 6.1 yards per carry, 12 touchdowns, almost 1,600 yards. KJ Hamler had 1,200 yards, 17 touchdowns. Sutton was good. Judy was solid. Noah Fant was solid. Defensively, Raekwon McMillan had a very good year. There's a lot of lag going on right now. It's very odd. 19 tackles for loss for Von Miller, but check this out. 15 sacks for Aiden Hutchinson from deep tackle. Unreal. Vonnie had 10.5. Vonnie B. Vishon. One of the strangest middle names ever is B apostrophe V. Sean. S-E-A. -A. Very strange. Um, I didn't mean to call him Vani there, so we had to, like, double take, because calling him Vani is very uncomfortable for me. Jacoby Brissett wins MVP. No Broncos in there. AFC Offense Player of the Year, Jacoby Brissett. Drew Locke at number six. I may have missed him the first time. I don't think so, though. I don't think so. AFC Defensive Player of the Year, Miles Garrett. 
Aiden Hutchinson at seven. Offensive rookie of the year, Ray Hatch. No Broncos defensive rookie of the year, Diego Diaz. We got Josh Vasquez at six. Your guess is as good as mine as to uh, you know who that is. But we will advance to the divisional. We should be like at least a low 90s team, like 92, 93 after the upgrade. Not mid-90s. I don't think we're going to be a 94. Yeah, we're 93. 95 offense, 91 defense. We get the Steelers in the divisional to get to the conference championship, and we do. 28-21, and now it is the Browns in the conference championship. We're going to hop in, do some super sim in case I have to jump in. We'd really like to win a Super Bowl. We got home field advantage. We are a 93 overall to their 89. It's time, man. It's time. We got to the goal line and couldn't score. And then we allowed a touchdown right off the rip. But now we're finally getting points up on the board, although the defense isn't doing a whole lot. We're up 17-13 here in the third quarter. And that is going to remain that way as no one seems to be able to push it into the end zone. But we do. The Browns answer immediately. And then they take the lead with about a minute to go. So all we need is a touchdown to win. Field goal ties it. All right. Probably looking at Cortland Sutton. Maybe Jerry Judy. This is the Jerry Judy rebuild. But Cortland Sutton should be open. He's not. So I'm going to duck underneath to Jerry Judy. Break a tackle with him. Call a timeout. Why does Jerry Judy not have a star on the field? He's superstar X-Factor. Did I just miss the X last play? I mean, I guess I must have. Didn't see it at all. Can I streak him? I'd love to get a post out there. Can't do it. So streak inside pass lead maybe he's on with the linebacker Can we fit that in there drew lock to jerry judy out of the back of the end zone the receivers have no knowledge of where to stand man you got to know where you are oh, that looks like a blitz now well, there are two things we can do here we can pick that up with zeke or we can throw at that side quickly to no offense jerry judy could be wide open i honestly think getting kj hamler on a slant is going to be super effective all we need is the time here. Fans kind of open. We're going to throw that one underneath, though. It's KJ Hamler fighting to the end zone. Down at the one. That's almost best case scenario, honestly. Eight catches for 101 in this game. And we are going to run goal line. Halfback dive to Ezekiel Elliott. Let's see if he can pound it into the end zone. And we do just that. Touchdown, Zeke. We're going to take the lead with 10 seconds to go as he plays rock, paper, scissors with nobody. He's, he's still at it. Okay, cool. Extra point puts this at a touchdown minimum for the Browns to stay in this game. Field goal won't cut it. They're throwing deep down the middle of the field. Where's that going? One second remains on the clock. Would have loved an interception there. But, I mean, this game is over. I would say there's pretty much absolutely no shot that uh, they end up winning this game. Let me use her, Javon Holland. Throwing deep down the right sideline. Could this be a touchdown? Yes, we lose at the buzzer. No, I mean, like you, th you threw it so far short of the end zone. That couldn't have been their best strategy there. Yeah, maybe you can throw it 90 yards in the air. That nah, wasn't that far, but we're going to the Super Bowl. Seahawks are in the Super Bowl at 15-1. and one. Broncos, Seahawks. This is actually a Super Bowl rematch, right? No, it was Broncos Panthers. No, but was it, was it Broncos Seahawks with Peyton Manning? No, it wasn't. That was Broncos Panthers. So see, I feel. Why do I feel like Seahawks Broncos was a Super Bowl though? It definitely was. Yeah, it was. I don't know why I felt like that didn't happen. That was with the. Uh, that was totally the one with the botched snap at the start of the game, right? Fun fact about this one: I fell asleep uh, during the first half, and I woke up after halftime. Uh, at a Super Bowl party. Well, like, this was before uh, I was drinking, obviously. It was 2014. I'm 21 now. I wasn't getting absolutely smashed at, like, some family Super Bowl party at, like, 13 years old. Or however old I would have been then. About 13 or 14. Uh, six years ago. Uh, I, would, I would have been 14. But, like, yeah. Hopefully we can get some type of Super Bowl revenge here. Over the... Terrible, terrible Seahawks. They're an 88 overall. Actually, before we jump in, let's check, uh, see if development traits have changed at all. Because they may have. It is Super Bowl week. It's always nice to see the red instead of the gold. KJ Hamler gets superstar development. So I'll take the gold there because he's a jump up from star. And then defensively, tough Borland getting superstar X-Factor. There we go. And here we go. 
Super Bowl, Minneapolis, Broncos, Seahawks, looking for revenge. Down 10 0 early. This is not good. 17 0. This is deja vu. 24 0. This team is getting annihilated. There's no defense being played by us. It's 38 0. Oh, nice. We scored a touchdown. That's fun. I, what do you want me to do? Mike Zimmer's the Seahawks head coach now? Yeah, we got murdered. It's 45 to 7. I mean, Drew Locke threw three picks. Elliott had a pretty good game. We probably should have done more with him. I don't know how he has 4.6 yards per carry, 116 rushing yards. He doesn't get a touchdown. Maybe we hand the ball off to him. Maybe we do that instead of Drew Locke throwing three picks. We have any fumbles here? Any fumbles at all? Nope. We just sucked. Our defense sucked. Ugh. Disgusting. 45-7 to final. And that will be the uh, closing point on the video. People always ask me to upload these rebuilds. I like them to a point, right? Madden 21 is extremely frustrating for a number of reasons because we can have a better team. And I get it's like the better team doesn't always win on paper in real life. This isn't real life. This is a video game, okay? I don't want to be squeaking into the playoffs with a 90 overall team and then getting murdered 45-7 in the playoffs. I know we didn't squeak in to the playoffs this time. We usually don't even make them. 45 to 7 Super Bowl. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.